know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind. Item number SCP-1000, Object Class Keter, Special Containment Procedures. All media reports related to SCP-1000 are being examined for potential verifiability. All organizations and individuals investigating SCP-1000 existence are to be kept under surveillance by Mobile Task Force Zeta-1000 and discredited and administered amnestics. All physical signs of SCP-1000 existence must be retrieved and kept in Foundation custody, and replaced with decoy items as necessary. Alleged sightings of SCP-1000 would always be investigated by Mobile Task Force Zeta-1000, however trivial the claim. Absolutely no contact with wild or captive instances of SCP-1000 is allowed without prior approval by Director Jones. Any interaction between SCP-1000 and humans, including Foundation personnel, must be reported to Director Jones immediately. Description. SCP-1000 is a nocturnal omnivorous ape classified in the Hominini branch, along with genera Pan and Homo. Adults range in size from 1.5 to 3 meters or 5 to 10 feet in height and weigh between 90 and 270 kilograms, 200 to 600 pounds. They have gray, brown, black, red, and occasionally white fur. They possess large eyes with good vision, a pronounced brow ridge, and a sagittal crest on the forehead similar to that of the gorilla, but present in both sexes. Their intelligence is on par with that of pan troglodytes, the common chimpanzee. SCP-1000 evolved alongside Homo sapiens, existing contemporaneously with proto-humans and humans in large numbers until 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, when the extinction event eliminated all but 1 to 5 percent of their population. This event was triggered by SCP-1000 contracting an anomalous pseudo-disease classified as SCP-1000-F1. This disease is passed on at the genetic level and affects every present-day instance of SCP-1000. The majority of SCP-1000 instances are born immune to the effect. Those who are not born immune quickly die. The effect of SCP-1000-F1 is as follows. Any hominid, including humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and non-immune instances of SCP-1000 that directly or indirectly observes any instance of SCP-1000 has a minimum 2% chance of being instantly killed through anomalous means via permanent cessation of brain function. This percentage is cumulative, and the longer a human views SCP-1000, the higher the chance of instantaneous death increases, at a rate of plus 1% chance per 20 minutes of viewing. This effect varies between individual members of SCP-1000 species, with some individuals carrying a death chance of 90%. The effect is also produced by dead individuals, though small fur samples do not exhibit the effect. No means of preventing this effect are small-scale only and include See attached documentation, level 3 clearance required. Because of SCP-1000's close relation to humanity, it is considered likely that SCP-1000-F1 could eventually transfer to human carriers. Any instance of SCP-1000 finding its way to a major population center could constitute a class end of the world scenario with a minimum death toll of and possible extinction of humanity. Fortunately, SCP-1000 appears to instinctively avoid human contact. It is not currently feasible to exterminate SCP-1000 entirely. For more information, see attached documentation, level 3 clearance required. The highest known population concentrations of SCP-1000 are at present located in the Pacific Northwest region of North America and the Himalayan mountain range in Asia. As of these populations remain extant. SCP-1000's presence and have also been documented within the past five years on every continent. All known significant populations of SCP-1000 located near human population centers have been eliminated. SCP-1000 came to the attention of the Foundation via contact by Dr. Franz in 14 with the Children of the Sun, who identified themselves as outcast members of the Serpent's Hand. This group has since been completely destroyed by the Foundation, due to their reluctance to surrender information about SCP-1000, SCP, and SCP since reclassified as SCP-1000- and SCP-1000-. Remaining members have either joined the Foundation or have gone into hiding, presumably as members of the Serpent's Hand. 
Weapons, tools, and other unique pseudo-technological resources in possession of the organization have been classified as SCP-1000-001 through SCP-1000-001. These resources have been made use of by the Foundation in multiple instances. For a full list, see Document 1000-3534-Y, Level 3 Clearance Required. Access to surviving ex-members of the Children of the Sun is restricted to personnel with clearance level 4 forward slash 1000 unless given direct authorization for contact by Director Jones. Further information is available to personnel with clearance level 3 forward slash 1000 or above. Personnel with clearance level 3 forward slash 1000 or above are required to redocument Alpha-1596-1000. Addendum 1000-466-X Update the Special Containment Procedures As of SCP-1000 Special Containment Procedures no longer include Procedure 516-Lumina Indicates that SCP-1000 may be developing a resistance to the sonic element. Will not develop further so that Procedure 516-Lumina can still be used in emergency situations. Investigation into alternate means of reliably keeping SCP-1000 away from human population centers is underway. Whether SCP-1000 resistance to Procedure 516-Lumina was calculated, and as such may be assigned to SCP-1000 or coincidental, by chance of natural species variation, is not known at this time. Level 3 clearance required. Document Alpha-1596-1000. Missive from Director Jones. You've probably heard the rumors before now. Everyone without the clearance level to know better wants to get their dig in. Did you hear Sasquatch is a SCP? Are we going to capture and contain Batboy next? Yes, Bigfoot is SCP-1000. I'm sure you've snickered. Don't worry, contrary to rumors, we don't actually assign you to Keter duty for finding something humorous. You think Bigfoot is funny because we want you to think Bigfoot is funny. We bankrolled Hollywood comedies and farcical documentaries, paid off men in gorilla suits, perpetrated hoaxes with bear prints and goat fur, bribed and brainwashed cartoonists to get especially silly depictions on children's television. Even the term Bigfoot comes from us, planted in the media in 1958, a term people would find even harder to take seriously than Sasquatch. Why? We'll get to that. The information in the article that you've already read isn't entirely true. There are two direct lies and plenty of lies of omission. There is no such thing as the anomalous pseudo-disease referred to as SCP-1000-F1. SCP-1000 do not possess a magical death aura. In fact, SCP-1000 do not directly exhibit any anomalous effect whatsoever. We also lied about SCP-1000's intelligence level. SCP-1000 aren't chimp-level smart. They are smarter, to be precise. They are exactly as smart as us. That brings us to the lies of omission. That's what this letter is for. The lies come from me, so I figure the truth should come from me as well. This is a story we got from the Children of the Sun who defected to us. It's a story we didn't believe, refused to believe at first. As you've already read, the apes we call SCP-1000 evolved alongside us. We walked in the daytime, they walked in the nighttime, our nocturnal siblings in the shadows. But while we were still wandering hunter-gatherers, they changed, like we would a few thousand years later. Tools, weapons, agriculture, domesticated animals, stable settlements. As humanity blinked in the Pleistocene sun, SCP-1000's population exploded across the night. They blanketed the planet in the tens of billions. They made things that we still can't comprehend, even though we've thoroughly studied the surviving pieces. Organic technology. They made trees and birds of prey grow into fast-moving ships, herds of animals that became trains, bushes that became flying vehicles. From insects and pigeons they made things equivalent to cell phones, televisions, computers, atomic bombs. The children described vast shining cities, stretching across glaciers and penetrating the deepest caverns, grown skyships of ivory and spider silk, creatures tending them with hundreds of blinking eyes. We were rare, like gorillas now, a few hundred thousand left at best. We avoided their settlements just like wild animals today avoid ours. SCP-1000 understood we were intelligent like them, but avoided us just as we avoided them. Saw us as fairies, as gnomes, ascribed us supernatural powers, said we ate bad children while they slept in the daylight. They fenced off our dwindling wild populations and conservatories, outlawed poaching but in the underground consumed our bones as aphrodisiacs. Then their civilization fell, and we did it. By we, I don't mean the Foundation. By we, I mean humanity. 
The story is muddy. Supposedly a trickster forest god showed humanity favor, showed us the master's tools and how to use them. Why we did it we don't know. Perhaps they hunted us. Perhaps we were simply afraid. Perhaps it was just that they fenced us in, unintentionally or not. We simply don't know what the truth is. Somehow we acquired SCP-1000's own technology, and with that we instigated a SK-class dominance shift in which humanity became the dominant species on Earth. We wiped out 70% of SCP-1000's population in a single day. The Day of Flowers, the children called it. Supposedly every flower bloomed that day, while our enemies died in their sleep. Then we hunted the rest down, but we went further just killing them. With a few of the more twisted of SCP-1000 devices, we drove the survivors mad, even those hiding beyond our reach. We trapped them in their own minds, blocking higher functions and leaving their bodies to fend for themselves like any ordinary ape. We slaughtered their living machines and burned their vast shining city with SCP-1000 bioweapons that reduced everything to slurry and dust that washed or blew away in spring rain and wind. Which brings us to today. You're going to read all about this in the Level 3 documentation, but I'll give you the short version here. SCP-1000 are somehow regaining their forgotten intelligence and knowledge. Maybe they never truly lost it. We don't know. This is why the ever-increasing number of Bigfoot sightings is so worrying. Why the attempts at contact, however indecipherable, are even more worrying. Yes, SCP-1000 are just like us. That's what makes them so dangerous. We wiped them from history and memory. We dissolved their civilization and we slaughtered most of their species. Just ask yourselves, if they got the chance, what more would they do to us? Addendum 1000-056-D Instances of SCP-1000 have tried to make contact with Foundation personnel on multiple occasions. Most of these attempts at contact have untranslated, though recent attempts show that some instances of SCP-1000 are capable of communicating in English. Log 1000-AD065-X1 The following is a rough translation of recent SCP-1000 attempt at communication with Foundation personnel on See attached documentation. We forgive you. Given choice for now.